Sea Keeping. Hello everybody, I am Nick the Naval Architect. I had the opportunity to give a presentation to the Pakistan Naval Engineering College. No fancy math, just a simple overview of the science, structure, and process of sea keeping. I've then taken that video lecture and broken it up into several easy to digest YouTube videos. So let's dive into the subject of sea keeping. If a wave hits a ship on the sea, how much does that ship move? And part three of our video series introduces fluid structure interaction, quantifying that question of how does a ship respond to the ocean environment? So let's stop talking about the ocean climate. Now let's talk about the second half, fluid structure interaction. How do we actually um, predict the motions of the ship once we have that input wave spectrum? And generally the way this works is we say that if we can predict how the ship would respond to a single wave, then we can repeat that and predict its response for all of the waves in the wave spectrum. So the general analogy that I use to describe the, the uh, models for this is imagine the ship as a forced vibration model. In forced vibration, we have several different force components. We've got a mass, damping, spring, and an active force. And the key element is that whatever your input wave frequency is, the ship's going to respond at the same wave frequency. And then the question is, what is the magnitude of that response? Uh, what is the amplitude of the response? To put this a little more specific, if we were to try to predict ship roll, the input is a wave at one radians per second frequency. The ship is going to roll at one radians per second. And the question is, what is the amplitude of our roll motion? To predict that amplitude of response, we have to consider all the force components involved. So generally that divides into four categories. Our mass, which is proportional to acceleration. We have a damping term that's proportional to the velocity and then a spring term that's proportional to translation. And then finally, we have our active force, which is not proportional to anything. It acts independent. So for example, that input wave, that would be the uh, active force component. Once you do that, once you build up that, all of these different components, we can predict the response. However, the ship has six different motions to it. We have surge, sway, heave, roll, pitch, and yaw. Six different motions that it can experience out on the ocean. What that means is that we have six different vibration problems. We have six different resonant frequencies that the ship can resonate at. And we want to avoid all of those frequencies for those different motions. The mathematics start to get a little more complicated when you have to consider all six motions and how they interact together. But for this introductory lecture, we're just going to keep it to considering one motion at a time. And the key takeaway is to think about it in terms of this vibration problem. And the important thing is to ask yourself, what are the major force components? Because those components are how we determine the interaction between the ship and the ocean waves. One of the biggest questions is the hydrodynamic effects. When we were talking about these uh, different force components, our mass, damping, spring, and active force, one of the biggest questions in seakeeping is what are these components? What, what is the magnitude? Something like mass, well, that's somewhat easy. We can figure out the mass of the ship. A lot of this that we can calculate just from the physical properties of the ship, you know, just adding up the weight of all the structure. But the hydrodynamic effects, the interaction with the water, that's the complicated part of uh, the ship interactions. And the best way I can describe this is if you can imagine a ship that is rolling in the ocean, well, for that ship to roll, the first thing that has to happen is the water has to get out of the way. And if we imagine that, we can remember that water is very heavy. If you're thinking about these thousands and thousands of cubic meters that are moving around the ship's hull as it rolls in the ocean, that could have a pretty major effect. 
And that, in fact, is the big factor when we're considering shift motions, is these hydrodynamic effects. You know, first we're trying to figure out with an input, or excuse me, a one meter wave amplitude, well, what does a wave amplitude translate into in terms of actual force on the ship? But then the other two major components are the added mass and the added damping. And this is saying, um, as the ship is rolling, what is the hydrodynamic interaction? And I use roll as a common example, uh, but you get these components for all of the six motions. And it, we generally divide this into two major hydrodynamic forces. These are reactionary forces. Uh, they depend on the ship's motions. The reason we call them a mass and a damping term is because when you work out the mathematics, uh, you get one component that's proportional to the acceleration of the ship, and then another component that's proportional to the velocity of the ship. That's why we call them an added mass and an added damping. It's important though to recognize that you won't ever get these components in isolation. You won't ever have just a mass or just a damping. They always come in, in pairs, they always come together. And like I said, calculating the magnitude of those forces, that's the big challenge. As I said, that's a pretty big challenge. The question becomes, how do we actually calculate that? What are our tools for getting this hydrodynamic interaction? And generally, the golden standard is the towing tank or the maneuvering basin. The nice part about the towing tank is it's an experimental facility where we can specifically control the environment. The input is a specified set of waves. So you'll have a wave maker at one end and you can tell it exactly what type of waves, what magnitude, what frequency you want it to create. And then we have a model of our ship that we're towing down the, the basin to interact with those waves. We can measure the output as a result. We could measure the ship's motions and compare that to the input waves. And that would give us a data set that we call RAOs, uh, response amplitude operators, which is very nice. It's basically a ratio saying that if you tell me what the wave amplitude is, I can tell you what the ship motion is. And that's very useful. That means you don't have to calculate all the mathematics in between. You just go straight from input to output. Um, but sometimes we actually do want to know the, the mathematics in between, the forces involved. So you could actually hold the ship fixed on your towing carriage, and then you could measure all of the forces on that ship model as you subject it to different waves. And then that can actually calculate your wave forces, your wave excitation, your added mass, and your added damping. So remember, I said that these were all the terms that are very hard to calculate, that require pretty advanced mathematics. That's the nice part about the ship towing tank is rather than calculating it, we just directly measure it. And I'll say even with all of our advanced mathematics, uh, the ship towing tank is still the golden standard when it comes to hydrodynamic forces and sea keeping interactions. Just because it's the golden standard doesn't mean it's the only tool. Uh, the other side, we have numerical analysis and there's a variety of different tools there. Strip theory, panel code, RANS, um, all each worth their own lecture, but essentially just to know that all of those are cases where we are letting the computer solve and calculate those forces based upon different theories. But like I said, none of them are perfect. Whew, I have a lot of footage to cut out. Oh, you're still here. Thanks for watching. And did you know that you can do more with DMS? Check out the website to find more articles, tutorials, and engineering services. When it comes to maritime engineering, if you want to do more, give me a call and let's see what we can achieve together.